What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out something different, something new on the channel. Uh, I did a poll recently on Twitter, and you guys voted in the overwhelming decision for me to finally check out some Jim Cornette uh, clips from his podcast that he be uh, dropping on a week to week basis. Um, you guys have been wanting me to check out some Jim Cornette uh podcast clips and uh the funny thing is i've been subscribed to uh the gym the official jim Cornette channel for a while like majority of this year so a lot of times when i'm not um recording or doing anything i'll just watch his videos in my spare time and they be having me rolling his his takes on wrestling now is quite hilarious granted jim Cornette is a staple in wrestling he if there's anybody that knows about wrestling it's him some of his opinions i agree with some of his opinions i don't but most of the time i'm always laughing because the dude is hilarious in my opinion and you guys voted for it on twitter saying you guys wanted me to check this out so or check out some of his uh some of his podcast clips so that's what we're gonna do and we're gonna check out this video the jim Cornette. i mean jim Cornette reviews the elite versus the death triangle on aew now i know how jim Cornette feels about kenny omega how he feels about the flippy matches the death triangle all that i know how he feels about it um, this was from uh, last week's Dynamite. Um, it was an enjoyable match, but I said on the live stream of watching the show, if you've seen one, uh, the Elite versus <laughs> Death Triangle match, you've seen them all. You know what I'm saying? There, there's pretty much the same type of formulaic. There's a lot of acrobatics. So not to say I, it doesn't take any way from me personally but i can understand how a wrestling peer is to be like yo this ain't wrestling this is gymnastic so i know he's about to go in on this because he just can't stand them this should be a good one appreciate all the love and support man let's get all right, right into this the one. one everybody was talking about up next we hear the the strains of kansas and it got big booze because mm -hmm. they're in Chi Town, they're in Chicago, and here come the douchebags. I mean, the EVPs. <laughs> the EVPs in the best of seven series for the six man tag team title Twinkle Toes and the Buckaroos uh, with Don <laughs> Fallis and Knock It Off. It's always funny. He calls them Twinkle Toes, bro. He does not care for Kenny Omega in the elite. Like he actually is Kenny Omega and John Moxley. He can't stand. Oh, it's so great. <laughs> Cutlet against the Bermuda Triangle, Penthouse <laughs> and Felix and Pack. And it, I mentioned last week I call them the Bermuda Triangle because they're always lost. <laughs> And we're expected to see another one oh. of these. They're going to do this, apparently, mm -hmm. five more times. Yep. So as soon as these... Which is, for you know, and I'm going to be cutting in to get my own opinions on certain situations that you talk about. To me personally, when they said the best of seven, I'm like, do I think the matches will be good? I'm sure the AEW fan base will love it. But it's like, does it really need seven matches? I don't know about that. Maybe they could do... Me personally, the most I would think is a best of five series. The most I can think of is doing like a best of five series and really have them be special. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. That's just that's just my opinion or whatnot. Like do the best of five, whoever. You know, I don't know. Or you can shorten it. I would at least shorten it. That's 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 the point I'm trying to make. I would at least shorten it. I don't know about the best of seven. Yeah, you know, you could do the best of three. That could be something to make each match special or the best of five. But I don't know. It's just my personal take on it. It's 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 a lot of the same type of the match that they've had before. So, you know, I don't know. If the AEW fan base loves it, who am I to say, you know what I'm saying, they shouldn't, you know, do the best of seven. These knuckleheads get in the ring. In Chicago, the CM Punk chance breakout. Mm -hmm. So Kansas gets turned way up. The announcers start talking to where as soon as somebody finishes a sentence, by the time the period is implied out of their mouth, the other announcer is jumping in. The music crossfaded quickly to the Bermuda Triangle's music, and they got them in the ring, and for the rest of the match, the crowd audio was way down. The announcers mm -hmm. were up and trying to cover up for what might take place. And... 
again. I'm not even going to talk about the match because I didn't watch it. Because it, it, why? It's the same fucking thing. <laughs> but when you zip through it, you see further evidence that Tony has lost complete <laughs> control of this whole situation. There's Matt Buckaroo vaulting over the top like the buckshot lariat, but when he lands, he falls on his ass and sells his foot. Oh, golly. Like CM Punk did. Yeah. And then the camera caught him, and a fan camera caught him even better. They got a little section of their buckaroo fans to start mm -hmm. chanting, fuck CM Punk, even in Chicago, so yep. that one of them was down there on the floor leading those chants, saying, come on, come on, come on, mm -hmm. it needs to be louder. To me, that distracted from the match. I get it, you're in Chicago, but if you want to come off as like, oh, we're not phased by it, you just have the match. There was a lot of, like, a lot of shots being sent at someone that's not even responding back. I get how you feel. You, you're entitled to feel how you feel, and I understand it. But it was so many references that were sending shots at CM Punk. It's like, it's not even there, bro. Like, it doesn't doesn't matter like <laughs> you're reminding us of the debacle if anything i would just try to move forward or whatnot like i don't know it just it it, it definitely detracted from the match i think they focus more on the uh, trying to get you know some heel heat or some crowd heat and stick it to cm punk and actually just focus more so on the the story you're trying to tell in the match that's just my personal opinion and we've talked about this before with the Cabana thing, bringing Cabana out of goddamn nowhere yeah, that to was... wrestle Jericho so Jericho can laugh and say he got one over on Punk. Yeah. With all the fucking backstage maneuvering he's been doing trying to get Punk out of there. And now the, 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 the buckaroos are pissed off because they got their asses handed to them. And which one got his eye closed up? Which one just got his bell rang? I can't remember. Nevertheless. The eye closed up was Balding Buck. Okay. <laughs> the older one. Sockeye Buck. Sockeye Buck. <laughs> what they're going to do, Tony Khan has not extricated himself from this situation. He has still got a, a valid contract with CM Punk that not only says he's got to pay him a certain amount of money, but I'm sure there's royalties for merchandise. There's all that stuff in there. They got a video game coming out. Mm -hmm. And I saw that somebody said that maybe they're going to take Punk's picture off the cover. Well, d how hard is it to take a motherfucker out of a video game once he's in it? Or do they still need some type of relationship to not screw up other things? And here, Tony is letting these fucking little pampered smug nitwits <laughs> yeah. who are constantly in need of having their pussies powdered <laughs> inflame and instigate a fucking guy who does not like being disrespected publicly to begin with before the out is is done and the ink is dry so again <laughs> the more they do this the more they try to piss Punk off, all he's got to do is say, okay, fuck it. I'll file this lawsuit. Mm -hmm. And then he's got a lot of people's balls in his fucking hands. And there's a lot of shit that they ain't going to want to fucking hear. <laughs> Getting out in public is going to get out in public. Mm -hmm. And anybody in their right mind in any court of law would defend the independent contractor over the executive vice presidents in this incidence. Yeah. An instance, even without their shady background with other people. So all they're doing is poking the bear and pissing him off, and Tony's going to be the one to have to explain to his father, to his legal team, Mega and the rest, to the network, to whoever gets involved in the litigation, well, yeah, he wasn't going to sue. I guess we could have worked it out, but mm -hmm. my self-chosen... EVPs wouldn't quit fucking with him on national television. So now he's suing us. And that's a real possibility. I know some can say, oh, CM Punk started this. We don't know exactly where the real tension happened behind the scenes, where it started. Granted, CM Punk didn't make anything better, but you can't have your EVPs coming in there, you know what I'm saying, squaring up with you. Granted, what CM Punk said, those are grounds for fighting, but at the same time, you got to remember your position. 
It'd be different if it was just wrestlers coming up to another wrestler saying, what you say, let's fucking go. They're EVPs of your company. That's their position before a wrestler. So if you have your EVPs ready to square up, it does not look good. Especially, it probably doesn't look good when you bring like lawsuits into the mix. It's like, bro, you fought me. And we weren't in character. You fought me because of what I said about you. So, I don't know. I don't know. It just seems like dragging it on when people should be trying to move past the situation. That'll be a good message to deliver. And wh why is it that we hear all that? We, we, all we've heard from Punk's side, in quotes, is Uncle Dave... You know, the, the uncle of the buckaroos is said, well, Punk's side is said to not be happy about this. But we see the other side on national TV assing off like six-year-old kids. So does this again cast all the other talk about, well, who was doing what behind whose back and who was doing what in front of people? Mm -hmm. Does that call all that into question again? Now, let's, let's reexamine all that shit a little bit. I believe so anyway, I believe that was anyway. also the day that an article was published with an interview with Kenny Omega. It was a puff piece, but it was him basically saying the fans should let it go. Let this all go. Yes. And then they go out there and it's not it's not between us and CM Punk. We should let this all go. And, and then, then his you two do this. Jack -off friends <laughs> go out there and start leading the self picked fans in a fuck CM Punk chant on television. Yeah. So it's anyway, hard to let it go. we just saw this when fucking match. And the buckaroos were trying to be the heels since the crowd was booing the shit out of them anyway. And the match was an immediate six-way and all over the floor, and they had the corpse referee <laughs> yeah. and the same foolishness they always do. And finally, Cutlet <laughs> gave Matt Buckaroo a hammer, but before he could use it, Penthouse got in with his own hammer <laughs> and hit Matt Buckaroo in the back of the head and, or the top of the head and packed Pendy. So now the the EVPs are down two to zero. Yep. Because they're trying to babyface themselves by saying, "Oh, we don't mind doing jobs yeah, as long as somebody hits me in the head with a hammer first. <laughs> the only friends who are willing to work yeah. with right now. To the only and here's another boy. They better make this a best of seven series. Where's the next great six man tag team challengers? Mm. House of Black. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, well, of course. That's exactly why they came back. So that they can have more fun matches with their friends. <laughs> the friends that wanted to leave the company a while back. And bear with me on this. <laughs> one more thing and we'll move on. Bear with me on this, Brian. You won't have to Google this. A lot of the other folks in the audience might. But does Kenny Olivier <laughs> remind you of what the, the progeny would be? What the offspring would look like if there was a love-child combination between 80s fitness icon Richard Simmons and 70s pop oddity Leo Sayer. <laughs> I know the Richard Simmons part. You know, I, can, didn't, I that's, did not expect a Leo Sayer. That's can you, can you wow. see it? Definitely the dance moves of Leo Sayer, I would yes, say. Yes, it's like 70s, 80s, <laughs> and today. The nutrition is better. Kenny's a little thicker than both those guys, but the hair, the expression, <laughs> the mannerisms. He does not like Kenny Omega. All righty. <laughs> then we've had another... Hey. I Don't just wanted to it. say, I watched that match with my brother who was here, and he, again, a wrestling fan when he was younger, hasn't watched in years, doesn't have any interest, but he was curious what I was watching, and he watched most of Dynamite with me. Two things that he couldn't get past. One, the referee standing there while everything happened, mm. not counting, not doing anything, and when he did count, took 10 seconds between one and two. Yeah. yeah. And then also, he called it out. You know, I'm not a big fan of sequence wrestling, and that's what this is. That's what the Young Bucks do. It's... A bunch of sequences. I mean, every match, Nick and Ray Phoenix, I'm going to hold your hand, and I'll run over here and jump this way, and then you jump. Every match, mm -hmm. sequence wrestling. But he found, and again, he hasn't watched this shit in years. He goes, where are those other guys? How come everyone disappeared? Yeah, yeah. Why are those guys on the floor? Yeah, he called it out. <laughs> everyone waiting for their spot to run in and do the sequence. It looks bad to someone who doesn't watch. Hey, hey, in MLW, Penthouse and Felix were there, right? And I saw them penthouse. do this live for the first time, and now apparently <laughs> so they do it in bro. every match. But they will do that double-team thing off the top rope 
where one guy stomps the other guy is holding him or whatever the fuck, boom. And then the guy that did the stomp or whatever off the top jumps up, hits the ropes, and runs and dives out of the ring (laughs) onto somebody that just happens to be standing on the floor in the right (laughs) place, right? Every fucking time. And the first time I saw him do it, they're not even smart enough to realize they they step on their own finish. They that was the the double team move was their finish. Boom. And as the guy gets up and goes to cover the guy that they flattened, the other guy hits the ropes and does the dive. Well, the camera's following the dive and they missed their own finish. And then I said, "Well, certainly they'll never do that again." They do the same goddamn thing Damn. every time. Hit this move, guy hits the ropes, dives out on the floor on some guy that just happens to be standing in the right place. <laughs> the fact that he's calling it like that to the team. Nobody sees the the pin or the whatever the fuck they're doing with the other thing. But it's got to be, <laughs> if you watched wrestling 20 years ago and then have not seen any of it, anything since then, and you watch something now, I think mm. everybody can agree on this, regardless of whether you think that the shit these days is any good or not. Whoever was watching from 20 years ago hasn't seen anything and then watches this today has to, their only response can be, what the fuck is this? Yep. He, he's, he's spot on with that. Someone that hasn't watched wrestling in forever, I showed them AEW, or even sometimes in WWE, even though I think WWE, they're more tamed. They're more structured with their matches. I think AEW has more of that indie spirit, which is not a bad thing. I'm not, this is not a video of hating one over the other. I'm just pointing out what I see. And and I guess WWE is more of traditional wrestling with more of the sports entertainment aspect to it. And then AEW gives me the indie part of wrestling where there's a lot more flips or a lot more dives. They take a lot more risks, but people love that. And my personal opinion, I don't have a problem with it. It's a cool visual. I'll be having fun with it. But I can see how someone could be like, yo, what, what is this? If they haven't watched wrestling in like 20 years, like, what the fuck is this? What story are they telling? I'm more so a guy that likes the story. I'm, I'm very, I like the story within the wrestling and then the wrestling itself is telling that story. It makes me more invested. Yeah, if you're doing the flips and dives, it's always cool to see those every now and then, but I'm not as invested because I, there's no real story here. Like the best of seven, I mean, the, uh, the only story, I, I don't even know what the story is. Like they both can cheat, you know, both teams can cheat. And then we got the whole back, background situation with CM Punk kind of being in intertwined unintentionally or intentionally however you want to look at it I don't know I don't really I mean I guess there no there doesn't need to be a story with a best of seven but it would be cool if there it was that added addition to the storyline like trying to figure out who's the best team there's some beef or maybe some tension between teammates or opposing teammates i don't know it just it adds that little bit of oomph to the wrestling overall but yeah man jim Cornette always makes me laugh it's always a good time to check out his video so if you guys want me to check out some more of Jim Cornette uh, clips, uh, his uh, his podcast clips, let me know down below saying, yo, check out some more of this and hit the like button. If you hit that like button, that'll let me know you guys are very interested in me checking out some more. And I'm not, I'm not going to oversaturate the channel with this because he posts a lot of clips from his podcast. So I'll probably do like some of the important ones, some of the ones I know people may want me to check out, some of the funnier ones as well. So. But yeah, man, I appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. Road to 150K. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See you on the next one. Peace.